So then today, the feast of St. Luke, the evangelist, is going to be back here in the Miami area after a long time. And uh, so in any case, there's a few considerations of the day in the feast of uh, St. Luke. And Father, some of the ghosts are men. We read in the Holy Bravery that St. Paul, several times in the scripture, in the 14 epistles, he says, as I said in my gospel, as I said in my gospel, my gospel, my gospel. And then whenever St. Paul refers to his gospel, he is referring to the gospel of St. Luke. Because St. Luke was the companion of St. Paul. And, uh, and remember that St. Paul, when he learned about our Lord Jesus Christ, he learned about him in a different way. He did not learn about him in the way of the other 12 apostles. He's the 13th apostle, but the one born out of due time. And St. Paul, he was during the three years in which Christ ruled, uh, did his public ministry, St. Paul was the enemy of God. He was a Pharisee, and he had no interests in the miracles of Christ. He had no interest in his preaching. He would have known very well about his miracles, known very well about his preaching, but he made it a point that he would not meet him. He made it a point that he would not know anything about him. And then finally, when our Lord Jesus Christ died, he made it a great point to make sure that his kingdom, after his resurrection, will be brought to an end. And therefore, he volunteered and got papers from the high priest that he would go and arrest those that were followers of Christ and see that they were put to death. He was a great enemy of Christ. And yet, he was knocked off his horse. And after he was knocked off his horse and made blind, and our Lord, he, he asked in heaven what happened. And the, and, the, and the voice came from heaven and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard to kick against the goad. And we see one thing about the, the life of St. Paul. He is a great example, the greatest example of the unstoppable power of the grace of God. And so he, 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 he rose from his blindness. Three days later he was cured of his blindness. And he then spent three years in, in the desert. Three years in the desert. After preaching for a short time, he spent three years in the desert. And in those three years in the desert, he was with Christ alone. And Christ explained to him his whole life. He would explain to him about the miraculous and incarn incarnation of his birth, the coming of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and the way in which he was received in the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all those things contained in the Gospel of St. Luke. St. Luke was one of the original 72 disciples. He was one of the 72 that walked with Christ during three and a half years. And he was a witness of all those things that happened during those three and a half years. But he was not a witness of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was not a witness of his infancy. And this is recorded by, uh, because of St. Paul and because of St. Luke himself. St. Paul would have spoken directly with Christ about what happened in his infancy. And he recorded, he told it to St. Luke. And St. Luke wrote it in his gospel. And also St. Luke, St. Luke, the gospel of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it's sometimes also called. His gospel, he was close to the Blessed Virgin Mary and he spoke with her directly. So he had two sources for the birth and infancy of our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul, who spoke with Christ and lived with him each day for three years in the desert. And the Blessed Virgin Mary, who's the mother of God. And having the double witnesses, he wrote down in true words the, with the Benedictus, the, the, the whole birth and infancy of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the gospel that says the most about the childhood of our Lord. And St. Paul, his gospel is St. Luke's gospel. So St. Luke and gospel, St. Luke and St. Paul, very close companions, working close together. St. Luke was faithful during those three and a half years. He followed Christ. St. Saint Saint Paul, during those exact same three and a half years that Christ wandered the, uh, the, his public ministry, he was an enemy of Christ. But God gave more grace to St. Paul than he gave to St. Luke. God gave a deeper understanding to St. Paul than he gave to St. Luke. St. Luke wrote the gospel that is given by his name, the gospel of St. Luke, and he also wrote the Acts of the Apostles. And during that time, the main apostle that he followed was St. Paul. And the majority of the Acts of the Apostles are about the journeys of St. Paul up to a certain point. And these journeys are with St. Luke was traveling with St. Paul. And so Luke, the, the doctor, wrote the Gospel of St. Luke. Luke, the doctor, wrote the Acts of the Apostles. And he was a disciple of St. Paul. And so he has admitted him the heart of St. Paul. And also a reminder that God is going to give grace everywhere. 
There are souls that hate him. There are souls that work directly against him, such as Saul of Tarsus. And yet God does not prevent grace from hitting Saul of Tarsus. And the same is true in the world today. There are many enemies of God. Enemies of God in the Catholic Church. Enemies of God all throughout the entire world. In fact, the whole world is filled with the enemies of God. When we go back to the Gospel, we find it wasn't different 2,000 years ago. 2,000 years ago, the world was filled with enemies of God. Who was the high priest? Caiaphas. And he hated God with a greater hatred than Francis now hates God, the Pope. A greater hatred than Benedict, the Pope before him hated God. He has a, had a greater hatred of God than even our most recent wicked popes and the many wicked bishops in the church today. We find that the great priests of the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, who were the priests of the true church, that most of them hated God. And the ones that did not hate him, such as Nicodemus, were cowards. And those were the soldiers that were in the time of Christ, of the chosen people. Now we're towards the end of the world. We are not yet at the very end of the world. But we, think, we are tempted to think that we are in a very different time than existed before. We are not. When our Lord Jesus Christ comes a second time, what did He say? He said in the Gospel, When I return, when the Son of Man returns, it will be as in the days of Noah. So when the Son of Man returns, man will be in sin and do the wickedness as he did in the days of Noah. We also find that our church is presently undergoing a crucifixion, is presently undergoing a great torment and a great sorrow throughout the whole church. The bishops have left the faith. The Pope has left the faith. The priests have left the faith. The faithful, one billion Catholics throughout the world, almost all of them have left the faith. And they are fighting against God. And they are ripping apart His laws, and ripping apart His customs, and ripping apart every good thing that His Holy Church has given to us. They're trying to destroy it all. And it looks as though it's so destroyed that there's nothing that can be done about it. But Saul of Tarsus was more wicked than Benedict. Saul of Tarsus was more wicked than Francis. He was more wicked than Cardinal, Cardinal Mueller and, and, and these other wicked cardinals in Rome. He was more wicked than them. And he had more fire than them. Even in the realm of wickedness, these modern wicked men are wimps. They do not have the evil of the evil men of old. Saul of Tarsus was more wicked. And when Saul of Tarsus was on his way, in order to destroy the faith in its beginning, to destroy Christ in his beginning, he was knocked off his horse and blinded, and the grace of God conquered him. And when he preached for a very brief time, they said, This is Saul. How can he be? How can he be the friend of God? And what, what does God say to, to Ananias, Anna, Ananias, the one that converted him? I don't want to go and cure him of his blindness. This is the man that said he was going to kill all of us. But then God told Ananias, No, you go and cure his blindness. For I will tell him what he must suffer for the love of my church. I will tell him how much he must suffer. He will be the greatest of all the apostles. The one born out of due time. And so the twelve apostles were great. But it's St. Paul, the greatest of them all. And the Gospel of St. Luke is the Gospel of St. Paul. The other, the, the, he is the one who gave us it through St. Luke that Gospel, says the bravery. It's the Gospel of St. Luke. It's the Gospel that comes from the mouth of St. Paul. And also from the personal witness of Luke himself. And from the Blessed Virgin Mary. And the Holy Ghost inspired every word of St. Luke. So St. Luke wrote every word which was divine. And every word he wrote came from the Holy Ghost. But it came through the mouth of Paul, who was no longer Saul of Tarsus, but St. Paul, who had lived three years with Christ in a desert alone, without being distracted by the crowds, without being distracted by all the external things. It was just him and Christ. And so his knowledge was more intimate. And he tells us that, I believe it was the letter to the Galatians, if one of his 14 epistles. He says, I did not learn about Christ from the apostles. I didn't even meet most of them, says St. Paul. There are 12 apostles. He knew St. Peter well and was friends with him. He met Andrew once. And there was one other apostle he thought he could pick out in a crowd if he saw him. Because he did think he met him once. And then St. Peter and Andrew were the only ones he had any knowledge of. And he didn't even meet the other apostles. He met Christ. And here we point out, our Catholic faith is the faith handed down by Christ through the apostles. But without alteration. St. Paul handed down us the faith he got from Christ. 
And Christ spoke to him at a different time than he spoke to St. Peter. But we'll discover that St. Paul's faith that he gave to us in his 14 epistles. And that St. Paul's faith handed out to us the gospel of St. Luke. It's identical to the gospel of St. Matthew. And it's identical to the gospel of St. Mark. And the gospel of St. John. That is the identical faith that St. Peter handed down to us. Because every apostle has the power to hand down the faith of Jesus Christ and not another faith. He cannot add to it. He cannot subtract from it. And if he ever does any of those two things, he heaps coals of fire upon his own head. He doesn't do any benefit to the church. He doesn't do any benefit to souls. And he steps away from his own apostleship. Now we're 2,000 years after the death of those apostles. Almost 2,000 years after the death of St. Uh, St. John and the Apostles. And in this period we find the same faith has been held faithfully by our Holy Church during the entire 2,000 years. And yet at each stage, not only now, but also at the very beginning, there were heretics. At each stage there were enemies of the divine truth. At each stage there was someone following the devil to heap up lies and try to destroy the souls of the faithful by heresies. And the church was defended by the protection of the Holy Ghost. And it's being defended right now. Even though there are millions, or in fact almost a billion Catholics, that most of them have abandoned the faith, the faith still remains. Our Lord Himself said, Will there be any faith left when I return? Of course there's going to be faith when our Lord returns. But it has been diminished. There are many souls, the majority of souls have wandered away from the faith, just like at the time of the crucifixion. Only St. John, only the Blessed Virgin, and St. Mary Magdalene were there at the foot of the cross. And the rest had all run away. And the rest had all become cowards and abandoned him. Besides those that turned directly into his enemies. And so, so it is now in the church. But there will always be some faithful souls. And remember also St. Luke, whose gospel is also called the Gospel of the Blessed Virgin Mary. He is, if we are going to remain faithful in our present crisis, the only one who will remain perfectly faithful throughout the entirety of the mystery of the redemption is the Blessed Virgin Mary. And that is why in our times, as we're heading to the great crisis of the church, and we're in it right now, heading towards a chastisement and the hard times to come, when this time comes, those that are truly inside the mantle of the Blessed Virgin Mary, those that are truly in the hands and the heart of the Blessed Virgin Mary, those that are truly in the bosom of our Holy Mother, these ones shall survive. These ones shall persevere. And so we must have a great love of the Blessed Virgin in our present crisis, in our present battle against principalities and powers. And St. Luke, St. Luke is a, the evangelist. He, has, he's, he preached only the holy and true faith. And though St. Paul received that faith directly from Christ, he didn't receive it different from St. Peter. And he himself said, If we ourselves teach you a faith different from that which has already been taught to you, let it be anathema. And that's the test of the church. When, we, when someone says, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to me, maybe she did. Our Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, maybe he did. But would Christ appear a thousand years after he appeared to St. John, after he appeared to St. Paul, after he appeared to St. Peter, walking this earth for three and a half, for 30, 30, 33 years, would he say something different to us now than what he said then? And the answer is no, because God is unchanging. And so one of the simple tests of the faith one of the faithful of the church. We have a new apparition of Our Lady. We have one in La Salette. We have one in Medjugorje. We have one in Fatima. Well, what is matching here? Does, does La Salette teach the same as Christ? Yes, it does. Does La Salette teach the same as the church has always taught? Yes, it does. La Salette fit the Holy Gospel? Yes, it does. Therefore, La Salette is approved by our Holy Church. Medjugorje. Does it match the gospel? Well, almost, except with a few little things, a few heresies here and there. And therefore, what it would say, you can be saved in your own religion, and you don't have to go to confession, but if you want to, of course you should. And so it gives you multiple options, and it is not of God. It doesn't match the gospel. Therefore, Medjugorje is condemned. And Fatima, Fatima, Fatima matches the gospel. Fatima teaches the same as the gospel. When the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to Juan Diego, who had been a Catholic for only a few weeks, a few months, well, actually a few years. He had been a Catholic for at least a year in Mexico. And he did not know anything other than the simple gospel that was taught to him. And the Blessed Virgin Mary told him that accord with the same faith, 
He never, she never gave to him something different than what was given to St. Luke. She never explained to him something different than what was explained to the other saints before. And we will find, no matter how many years this world lasts, we know we're towards the end, but we don't know the last year of the earth. Could be another thousand years for all we know. But we do know that however long the earth lasts, there will never be an apparition from heaven that teaches something different that's found in those four Gospels. Nothing different than found in those 14 epistles of St. Paul. Or different than found in all the books of sacred scripture, in the 72 books of sacred scripture, or in the tradition of our Holy Mother of the Church. It will never be different from St. Augustine. Never be different from St. Paul. Never be different from, the, from the, the teachings of the Holy Councils that are the true councils of the church. Not this Vatican II council, which the Holy Ghost never attended. Satan was the one that attended that council, not the Holy Ghost. It's not of God. But all those councils attended by God, and those that match all the universal teachings of the church, thee we will never find another teaching. And so now, now many souls, there's a great danger in our times, many souls trying to be dragged away from God by apparitionism. By various apparitions. This one is mostly good. That one is mostly good. Another one is mostly good. St. Paul didn't even meet the other apostles. Except for St. Peter and one Andrew and one other. But he gave us the identical teaching of the other apostles. He taught the same as St. Thomas. St. Thomas was teaching in India the exact same thing that St. Paul was teaching in Antioch. And there was no difference in their teaching. Because they were teaching not the teaching of St. Paul. Not the teaching of St. Thomas, but the teaching of our Lord Jesus Christ, who did not change when he spoke to Thomas and when he spoke to St. Paul. And so he will never change until the end of times. There has only been one true religion outside of which there is no salvation. From the beginning of time, it will remain that way until the end of time. There is only one Holy Mother Church. There is only one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God, one Father of all. And the, the, we follow all these things. As our sacred scripture and the Holy Mother teaches us. And so we must remember that St. Luke, he had his gospel, sometimes called the Gospel of St. Paul. St. Luke and St. Paul intimately connected together. And there is St. Luke. Listen to St. Paul. St. Luke, listen to St. Paul. St. Luke, listen to the Blessed Virgin Mary. St. Luke had his own eyewitness from his own time, seeing Christ at the time of the crucifixion, seeing Christ in his own miracles. And his words are true. And though he wrote down from his witness, and he wrote down from the witness of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he wrote down from the witness of St. Paul, he wrote down only each word that was inspired him to write by the Holy Ghost. And every single word that he wrote was the word of God, and not the word of St. Luke. He was the instrument, but he was not the word of, of St. Luke, but the word of God. He used St. Luke's medical knowledge, he used St. Luke's knowledge of Greek, he used St. Luke's ears, he used St. Luke as a tool but God himself was the author of his gospel. And only every word was written by God and not by anyone else. He's a true and only author of the gospel of St. Luke. St. Luke only the human instrument of that sacred gospel, but the true human instrument of that gospel. And the church teaches us that he's a true and human instrument. Many modernists say that Luke didn't write the gospel. He did. He really did. And he truly wrote that gospel inspired by the Holy Ghost. And so in the case of persevering in the faith, which is unchanging and immutable from the beginning unto the end of time and for all eternity, because we follow the true, unchanging, immutable God. Who's not going to bless you all? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.